Do you believe in ghosts, spectres and apparitions that leave a chill down your spine and goosebumps on your skin? If you do and you fancy a ghost story, then come with me on this little walk, armed with my camera, <laughs> just in case I see something. And I will add a disclaimer that any photographs I take will not be touched up. I will not superimpose a spectral image. So today I'm in Pluckley. Pluckley is a little village in Kent, west of Ashford, east of Maidstone. Now, in 1989, there was an entry in the Guinness Book of World Records for Pluckley as being the most haunted village in England, or if not, the Great Britain. That category no longer exists in the Guinness Book of World Records. So, you know, who can say which village is the most haunted? But there are re reported to be 12 to 15 ghosts, so separate sightings. And I thought it would be interesting to go and visit each one of these little locations. I'm not sure I'd want to do this at night. I'm probably the biggest skeptic there is. However, sometimes you just get a sense and a feeling, don't you? So we're gonna start here. I'm in Deering Woods, and it's also known as Screaming Woods. And now why Screaming Woods? Well, over the ages, it's purported that people who have come into the woods and subsequently been unable to find a way out <laughs> start to freak myself out here. unable to find a way out of the woods would end up dying here so in the dead of night you can hear screams <laughs> I'm freaking myself out of here. Cool, how far do I want to go into these woods? Anyway, I thought I'd come and walk in here, just um, take it in. You get a sense that you're being watched. You know that feeling? What was that? Is there something in there? Oh my god. I am not going to make a call to the spirits. You know, I've, I've seen that on these um, supernatural programs people go is there anybody there speak to us <laughs> I'm not going to invite any such thing right we don't want ramblings of me doing this we want to see the sights of Pluckley and the most haunted village in Kent so let's head over to Fright Corner mm. I'll take a couple of shots of the woodland. You can have a look, see if you can see any spectres. <laughs> and then we'll um, head over to Fright Corner. So behind me is Fright Corner, three-way junction. You've got Pluckley that way, Edgerton, and Smarden that way. Back in the 17th century, there was an old oak tree that used to stand here, and Pluckley had its own highwayman, 
Now the highwayman would hide behind the tree until his victim came by and he would rush out, scare them and actually stun them and so by doing so he could rob them of their money etc. One fateful night he was chased down by the local peacekeeping force because remember 17th century there were no police at the time so I can only assume that maybe the lord of the land hired his own militia to protect the land and the people and they chased down the highwaymen and wherever the tree was and it is reported that on certain moonlit nights the tree appears with the highwaymen and what the they ran him through with swords and pinned him to the oak tree leaving him there to die so on certain nights when it's dark dreary misty you're going to see an apparition of an oak tree with the highwayman attached to it i can't see a i can't see an oak tree now you know that's the skeptic in me <laughs> i'll take a, a little pano and i'll splice those four pictures together that's fright corner if you are, by the way, interested in photography, pop over to my sister channel, link above, and that's called The Red Camera, where I do photography as a hobby and have a following uh, uh, channel. Anyway, Fright Corner. It's, now it's all peaceful because the cars have gone. I should do it now. strange. Sounds like I can hear. It's, it's, it sounds like Wellingtons, welly, welly boots. Oh, scary times. Right, I'm going to go and have a look at where the watercress lady is purported to dwell, hang out. Let's go and have a look. This is Pinnock Bridge. Now at the turn of the last century, there was a gypsy lady who eked out a living collecting watercress from the brook. And she would take the watercress and sell it to the local villagers, harmless enough woman. One evening, she was sat here on the, on the wall, perhaps not this bridge, this looks too new, but certainly this bridge, this location. And she was drinking whiskey from a flask and smoking from an old clay pipe. And some of the ash and the tobacco, she spilled some whiskey and she caught a light. She was on fire and nobody found her remains until the next day. And it was all charred and burnt and they found the clay pipe and they found the hip flask. Um, so she burnt to death. And even now, people have said they've heard the screams and they've seen the visions of a burning figure running. <laughs> Frightening times. So yeah, the watercress lady around this area. I might take a nice picture of the tree though. That's an amazing tree sitting at the back. Let's take a picture of the bridge. And if you can see a spectra in the image, <laughs> then you're better than I am. Right, let's go and have a look in the village. So there ahead of me is the blacksmiths. And the blacksmiths, now a private residence, um, goes back to the 14th century and it was originally a blacksmith's forge and then turned into an alehouse. Now the thing with the blacksmiths, it was, I think it's got about three ghosts in it. There's a cavalier, a Tudor maid and an old horseman. When I say horseman, like carriageman, you know. 
Now the carriageman has been reported to be sat in a chair looking longingly at a fire. The cavalier goes around the top of the building in the upstairs and you hear footsteps and the Tudor maid goes about her business. Now an interview was held by Gloria Atkins, she ran the place in 1997 I think and she was explaining that she was in the kitchen and she heard the front door open and then close. So she got her note notepad to go and take the customer's order and when she got into the um, into the front area of the restaurant or ale house as it is or cafe she could see there was nobody there and a chair had been moved from the edge of the table and whether that was the maid or whether that was the cavalier no not the cavalier the coachman (laughs) so spooky but now it's a private residence who would think that you would buy a house that was once a haunted ale house do they still experience you know the things that are going on i don't know tell you what pluckley is very busy in a population of a thousand people you'd think that it wasn't as busy as that it's a main through fair isn't it so yeah blacksmith's arms three ghosts no less right onwards so I'm now walking down Dicky Bus Lane, which is a bridle way. And at the end of this lane used to be the mill. Pluckley had a mill, you know, windmill. And it was run by Richard Bus, Dick Bus, Dicky Bus. Now he had a friend, Henry Turf, who was a local teacher over at Smarden, that direction. And Henry Turf used to come up on a Sundays and it said that they like to sit and discuss politics. Anyway, one Sunday he didn't arrive and the following day the children were coming up this lane to school and they found the teacher hanged himself from a branch on a tree. I can't tell you which tree it was. It could be this one I'm walking under now. Anyway, It is said that on clear, windy nights, when the breeze is just ever so gentle, you can see his his form or his shape hanging and swaying in the breeze. Astonishing. I almost want to believe, (laughs) but You know, being a sceptic that I am, I suppose, because I've never seen one. So this is Dickie Bus Lane. Now, if we walk just to the top here, we find the main high street that uh, drives up through Pluckley, which leads into the old high street where the shops, etc. are, which I'll take you there in a moment. And it's here that people have heard the horse-drawn coach. You know one of those old 17th, 18th century coaches, four horses, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. Uh, one woman was here babysitting for her family and she actually says she saw the carriage go by and there were lights inside. So well, I guess, you know, candles or something. So coming out of Dicky Bus Lane, you got Maltman's Hill. And this hill rides up to the centre of the village where we've got the Copper's Cottage here and Silversmith's house, the old newsagent. And it's on this hill, Maltzman's Hill, that people have heard the horse-drawn carriage coming up the hill. It's starting to get dark. Right, on the corner here is the old bakery. Now, if I go and stand just up here on the footpath, we get a view of it from up here. And when renovation was carried out, they removed an old fireplace, which exposed the original hearth. The the fireplace removed was Victorian. And and I'm guessing we're talking 18th century houses here, Georgian period. Um, The removal of the hearth prompted um, 
what they said was inexplic inexplicable happenings. They would hear footsteps in the upper room walking across the landing to the point of the fireplace where the footsteps would stop. <laughs> oh boy, it's now a private residence. I wonder if the private residence people hear the footsteps. So the road behind me, this is where the um, Malthouse Hill, the, the carriage would come up and it said you can hear on very early mornings, you hear the, the horse-drawn carriage coming through. Now either I come here late at night or I come here early mornings, see if I can park. I hear a carriage before me. Either way, I don't want to scare myself out of my wits, so um, <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea. Okay, let's go across here because there's quite a few locations here in the, the main high street. One is people have reported hearing a couple with a dog walking up this path. So you'll be walking along and you hear a couple and a dog walking and talking and laughing. And the next thing you know, you turn around to have a look to see where they are and there's nobody there. I heard the story that you're driving along and there's someone hitchhiking on the main road wanting a lift. And as you drive by and look in your rearview mirror, because you don't pick up hitchhikers, as you drive by and look in the mirror, there's nobody there as the car drives by. <sighs> Scary time. So behind me is the blacksmith's arms. Now, what is it? We've got the black horse. Let me tell you about the black horse. So the black horse actually doesn't have any visible spectres in it. What's been reported is um, objects moving by themselves. So th we're talking poltergeist. Um, the landlady of the pub reported a glass moving a across the top of the, the, uh, the bar. Then stopping as it got to the end. Um, objects disappearing just and then reappearing days later. So two, two ghosts maybe. I'm going to take a walk into the church. There's some fascinating stories here. We've got the red lady and the, have a look at the deering windows. See the deering windows as I mentioned earlier. So in here potentially I wouldn't know where to start looking are the graves of the two Lady Deerings. One is referred to as the Red Lady and one is referred to as the White Lady. Now there's some confusion over which of the two ladies has the lead coffins but somewhere in here the dead of night You just can't see anything now. What we get is the white lady and the red lady roaming the grounds of the church. One of them is said to be looking for the grave of her stillborn child. And the other one walks around with a little dog. Now, both of the Ladies were buried in lead coffins and one of them was had a red rose placed in the coffin with her because the idea is that the Baron Deering wanted to preserve the body of his wife so he placed her in a lead coffin followed by a wooden coffin. Now a strange story is told that I've got to find the right window. On certain nights, you see one of the windows, it could be the little one, it might be the large one. I'm going to walk around just to see if there are any. You can see a light shining and flickering inside one of the windows. It could be any one of those. In the 70s, um, a paranormal team inquired of the local vicar if, if he could lock them in for the night so that they could do some 
exercises, you know, investigations. And they spent the night there, they locked them in, they had all their apparatus, and they were trying to work out, you know, if, if anything was happening. And they got quite annoyed because the vicar's little dog kept coming in, <laughs> kind of like, yep, yep, or whatever, running around. So in the morning, the vicar let them out. And he said, did you have any luck? Did you, you know, have any success? And they said, no, it was rather uneventful. But we were um, a little disturbed because of your dog kept coming in. And the vicar said, I don't own a dog. <laughs> so there, does your dog bite? No, <laughs> for that's not my dog. So the vicar didn't own a dog, you know. So, St. Nicholas Church, the Grey Lady and the White Lady. The Black Horse, which has got its poltergeist. You've got the couple that walk up and down this road here. There's only two more, actually. And that's down the lane here. You have the Greystone Monk and Rose Court. Now, in Rose Court, lived a young lady she was a, a, a young maid and she was besotted by the monk perhaps he was a young you know happy-go-lucky kind of you know bless you my child but I'm dashing you know think Brad Pitt as a monk and she fell in love with him but she realized she couldn't have him she took a concoction of poison ivy in liquid drank it and died and longingly looking out from Rose Court to Greystones, which was then a monk's um, residence. It's not there anymore. But they do say that they have the monk roaming around the fields and the meadows, searching for his love, who passed away because he died of a broken heart, knowing that she had died. <gasps> so that is a little sort of whistle tour of Pluckley. The most haunted village in Kent? <laughs> I don't know. Hitchhiker who disappears. There is a, a report of a taxi driver. He had dropped some people off at a nightclub and he was coming back through the village and he saw someone, you know, flagging him down. And he thought, oh, this is great. I can, you know, not a wasted return trip. I'll take someone back with me. He pulled over, back door opened, you know, the sort of lights came on. Guy sat in the back, off he went. And as he turned around to say, so where, where'd you, where would you like to go? <laughs> there was nobody there. <laughs> He's like, my God, I stopped to let somebody in the cab. Spooky. <laughs> You'll have to come and visit. You know, it's definitely worth a quick whistle stop tour. Um, it's probably better to come at night. Mm. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Quick tour of Pluckley, the most haunted village in Britain, at least from 1989. <laughs> See you in another video. What was that? Did you hear that? Oh, it was a truck.